My name is Kamara Kim. I am a photographer specializing in film photography, and I am from Des Moines, Iowa. I took a photography class in high school, just called Photography One, and we actually started off at film, but we didn't really do the usual type of film. We did pinhole cameras, so that's where like you take an old flask and then you poke a pinhole in it, and you put a piece of um, emulsion paper in it, and then it burns a picture in. So that's kind of how I started off. One of my uncles gave me a Pentax K1000 camera, which is my first 35 millimeter camera ever. Uh, and it was really cool. He showed me how to use it. And he, he even brought a roll of film and some batteries that I could use and shoot. Um, so I got those developed and I really liked it. And it was, um, it was really great timing because that was right before we started the toy camera phase in my film photography class. Um, so it was nice to get a little head start in it. What I like about film over digital photography is it really taught me how to be patient. So with film, you have to take one photo and then you have to wait like a couple days or weeks before you get it developed and scanned and get either USB or CD or SD card to upload it to your computer to see the actual photo itself. And with digital photography, it's really easy to get lost in the thousands of photos you can take of one certain item. So with film photography, you, you also have to be resourceful and just wait for the right moment. And kind of has to lose yourself in the moment before you realize that oh this is this is what I want to capture you know this is this is the moment I want to remember forever through photography uh, so there's this film I really like called The Secret Life of Walter Mitty and in the film there's a film photographer his name is Sean O'Connor and he's getting the last photo for the last Life magazine issue and it's a negative that Walter Mitty has to find and one of the quotes Sean O'Connor says is if I like a moment I don't like to get lost in the distraction of the camera but it's one of my favorite quotes in the movie and it's something that really stuck by me, especially as an, a film photographer, because I really do truly get lost in the moment and it makes me appreciate the world that's around me and makes me appreciate each moment that I photograph. So the process of film photography is you have your cameras um, and you load film into your cameras and as you're loading film and stuff, you have to remember that that's the part that's going to be exposed. There's going to be no photos on the part that you actually see of the negative. So then once you get your film loaded in, you can actually start snapping away um, and take as many photos as you like, but you do want to make sure that you preserve your film and how much film you're taking because most film rolls have at least 24 or, or 36 um, exposures. So you just have to keep that in mind. And once you're done, you can actually reel it back into the canister in the, in the camera. You don't want to open the camera and expose the film because the new how light leaks or the entire roll will be exposed and no photos will come out. So once you're done with that, if you're going to develop it yourself, um, you can take a dark room bag, which looks something like this. It's a black bag with armholes. You can put your arms in here. And then at the bottom, there is Velcro and zippers. Um, just to preserve the darkness inside the bag so no light leaks in and exposes your film before you even get a chance to develop it. So you want to put in your film canisters, um, your developing tank and like scissors, bottle openers, just to get that film out of the actual canister and into the developing tanks. And as you're doing that, you really want to make sure they have every single part that you need or else you're kind of screwed and you can't, you can't take your arms out the bag or else it's going to let light in. So once you take your film out of the canister, it's going to feel something like this. And I say feel because you can't see exactly what you're doing inside of the bag. So you'll fill the film and then you'll take a developing reel. And usually there's two or one developing reels in your developing tank. So you just take one out and there's these two little teeth. So you're going to bring your film through the little teeth and it usually slides in pretty well. Just pull it through until you, if you feel like a little force tugging along from you and just move it side to side. It usually takes a minute or two, depending on how long your roll is or how short it is, um, to get it all reeled in. And then now, since you have all your film rolled in, you're gonna put it back in the developing tank And make sure you close the funnel all the way because sometimes it can be a little loose so you just want to make sure it's secure and still moving just a little bit but not too much and then if you want to you can put in an agitator this just helps the chemicals go through all the film and make sure that there's no air bubbles or gaps that haven't been developed or haven't been touched by the chemicals and then put your lid on top 
And then you can take it out of the bag. So now, now's the part where you can put chemicals in. So you'll just pour your four chemicals in here, your developer, your stop bath, your fixture, and your photo flow. And depending on what kind of chemicals you're using, like on the brand or what temperature you have your chemicals at, that affects how long you're gonna be agitating and rotating the film. And once you're done with all the steps, you can take your film out and then you can take it out of the reel and it'll show all your pretty photos on your negative. So here I have my top five favorite pieces that I've taken over the years. I took this on my 16th birthday when my family went to Paris. So this is a photo from Les Domago Cafe. It's one of my favorite because it's something that I usually don't observe and it's something kind of mundane to everyone. So in here, it's just a bookshelf with a curtain because there's a window next to it. And what I really appreciate about this photo is how it's dark and gloomy, but what the books are illuminated. And I'm not a big book reader myself, but I really like, I really like how the light hit the books and highlighted what each book said on the cover and on the side. So that's why it's one of my favorite pieces. This is one of my other favorite pieces. This is from Cancun, I believe in 2020 or 2019-ish. Um, so this is actually before a storm was coming through. So you have the rowdy waves. Um, it looks like there's a lightning strike right there, but it's actually a scratch on the film roll itself. But what I really like about this is it's one of my first film photos ever I've taken on this Canon AE-1 right here. Um, and it just shows like the beauty of nature even though a storm is coming and I really I'm not a big storm chaser But I really do appreciate the the calm before the storm people say uh, This is another photo from Mexico. I took this on a Kodak disposable underwater camera This is at X carat and what I really like about it is the trees did like a little natural um a little natural frame I like to say and it really highlights the path through the middle and it was really quiet at the time we went to visit X Carat so I think it was a great time to take a photo because it was early in the morning and not a lot of people get to see this view or appreciate this view um, as much as I think they should appreciate it. Um, this photo I took at Hmong Village in the Twin Cities so I'm half Hmong half Cambodian and I, I really love clothes from both sides and this Hmong clothes, especially these hats, they're so detailed and they're so colorful with all the pom-poms and feathers and beadings. I think it's really intricate on how each hat has a different embroidery style and how each embroidery is hand embroidered and it's exactly not the same. Like they may be a stitch or two off from each other, a space or two away and that's what I love because it is not, it looks perfect but it, it isn't perfect because nothing is truly perfect. So that's what this photo reminds me of and it, the photo teaches me that. And this is actually a photo I took in London that's gonna be in the Far From Home exhibit. This photo was actually on the way to the mall. Um, this is the Hammersmith and City line. I took this photo because it was, um, it was really like golden hour, I, I would say. And it just captured the, like, the after work environment. Like, people were going home after work, people were tired, people were falling asleep on the tube. It just really captured that everyday mundane life that people may not notice, um, if they, especially if they don't live in that part of the world. So I like to think that my high school film teacher and my previous mentor, Olivia, had the most impact on my photography because they were the ones who taught me the most about photography. Um, so starting with my high school film teacher, he was the one that actually told me about or taught me about film and made the class really enjoyable because he was just a fun personality and someone that you can really relate to. And he was a great film instructor because he loves taking film photos himself. And with my mentor Olivia, she was actually um, a part of the visuals team for a newspaper. So she was kind of like a photojournalist, which is what I aspire to be one day. And she really helped me be confident in photographing people. And she really taught me how to be confident in myself too not just with film photography, but digital photography as well. And she taught me and she reminded me of a lot of things that you know that you should know as a photographer, <laughs> like um, certain framing, like you should have like the rule of one third or center of the eye and things like that. So I'm really grateful for the both of them. One of the other things that influences my photography is if I'm photographing people such as my friends, I really want to capture a moment that describes who they are truly. So their personalities really affect my photography and impact it because I want to photograph who they are over who they are overall. So for an example, I have this photo of my friend that I took and on the balcony of a pub and she's vaping and it's a really dark gloomy day and there's just like no sun, it's just rain, clouds, fog and the only light that you see is coming from her vape. So it really, and she's like a dark silhouette too. So I feel like it really encaptures her whole personality as like a, a person who may be in a dark or gloomy situation, but there's always a bright side to them and they always bring light 
to the community and always brighten up the days for everyone. What motivates me to create art is that art can really change the perspective of everyday things, such as the mundane. Like It can really show and highlight the beauty of everyday things that people may overlook. When it comes to my nature photography, I usually capture a lot of big, large landscapes from either the top of the point or the bottom of the point shooting up. And I, I really aspire to, um, to demonstrate the importance of nature cons conservation and highlight the beauty of nature that people may overlook every single day because it's something that may seem normal to them but not normal to other people around the world. So just being able to photograph and see these, these nature beauties in real life instead of just through the lens is just something amazing. And what I do with the camera lens is I really try to portray what I'm seeing with my eyes. Just knowing that with photos, there is so much potential to bring um, importance and injustice to social injustices or issues around the world. So that's something I really want to pass on to other people as well. That not with just photography, but other forms of art, you can do, so, you have so much power, you can do so much for your communities or around the world. Honestly, I don't really see my art going anywhere in the near future just because I kind of like it being the same. Um, but with my nature photography and highlighting the mundane, I would really like to be um, a photographer for either National Geographic or another big organization that highlights the importance of nature conservation and history around the world. Something I want everyone to know about me and my photography is I actually take film photos every single day, but it's kind of hard with today's um, economy so I am taking a little break but in London I did carry around both cameras this was towards the end of my trip and this was towards the beginning and middle of my trip so I would take at least two photos every single day I spent a lot of money on film <laughs> um, as other film photographers may know because I, I did go to places to get them developed um, so yeah that's just something um, actually one of my mentors taught me in the past was that you should carry your camera with you everywhere just in case you find that perfect moment or have a memory that you want to preserve forever on, on your film.